Hey y'all, what's up? Jamie, that's me here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another quick chat. We got a few things we're gonna talk about on this quick chat, not a whole lot. I wanna get into a Beyonce, Summer Walker. Uh, who else do I have on this list? Um, I'm not sure, but we're gonna get into it. So let's just go ahead and talk about it, all right? First person up is Beyonce, okay? I wanna talk about Beyonce because what they're saying is that Beyonce and Adidas have decided to mutually end their partnership. Now, Beyonce will continue to own Ivy Park from my understanding, and I love this so much because we'll get into why I love it, okay? Now, let's get into what they're saying real quick. They're saying a source close to the matter tells The Hollywood Reporter that the Grammy-winning entrepreneur and the and the German lifestyle brand have mutually agreed to part ways. Now, in 2018, Beyonce developed a partnership with Adidas, and she relaunched her Ivy Park um, active wear. All right. She also designed new footwear and apparel for this brand. Now, Bay has been in partnership with Adidas for about five years, but they had some issues. Seems like Adidas has been having issues with everybody, child. OK, because with everything that was going on with Kanye West, they decided to instead of just putting a pause on things, they decided to immediately jump ship and try to separate themselves from Kanye West therefore only leaving them in the hole financially, to be honest. And now y'all over here about to part ways with Beyonce, it's really not looking good for Adidas. And I feel like, is Adidas going to continue to be around? And if they are going to continue to be around, I feel like they're going to be going, <laughs> girl, they're going to be minimizing to a real simplistic brand, okay, to maintain. But let's keep going. They're saying that Beyonce has reported has reportedly had creative differences between Ivy Park and Adidas, and she's trying to reclaim her brand, create her own path, and ensure creative freedom. Let me tell you something. I love this for Beyonce personally. Um, I've told you guys at different times on my uh, video where when it comes to her Ivy Park brand, when she got with Adidas, it just wasn't giving what I wanted it to give. It just wasn't. I don't know who was in their creative department. Um, it just seems like did Beyonce have much say so at all? Because based on where her brand started versus where her brand ended up with Adidas, I I cringed. I hated it. It was like they were taking her brand from active wear to a more fashion fashion style type thing. Like you walk in the runway type stuff. Like it wasn't your everyday type of attire. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, they had a few fitness things here or there, but then next thing you know, they got a trench coat, and then they got this, and they got that. The prints didn't look that great. Like, but we were going to buy it anyway, right? Primarily because of Beyonce. Because when Beyonce rocks it, it looks like, oh, this is cute, even if it ain't cute for real, for real. So I'm glad she parted ways with them, and I'm looking forward to seeing um, exactly what Beyonce is going to bring to the table as far as her creative side when it comes to it. Now, a lot of people are saying, Beyonce, you got to promote your SHI2 girl. Like, you got to do a better job at promoting your own stuff and wearing your own gear. You know, some people are saying that, but I'm wondering if she didn't do a lot of, you know, promoting and wearing and whatever the case was because she was relying solely on Adidas to do their part. But now that the brand is going back into her hands, I want to see what she's going to do with it, what new styles she's going to bring to the front, and if we're going to be seeing her rock a whole lot more of her own SHI. You feel what I'm saying? So we're going to see, you know, we're going to see what it's given um yeah I think this is the best decision that's the short answer y'all try to pull all the stops out when y'all had this partnership I remember y'all were sending stuff out to different celebrities giving them sending them big uh boxes or whatever to their house for them to you know post on social media oh I got my Ivy Park I got my Ivy Park I need y'all to understand celebs doesn't don't for me and I feel like this is really for a lot of people, right? I feel like celebs, a lot of celebs don't really drive us to want to purchase fashionable items. They really don't. I feel like y'all should send them to maybe some influencers or even some random people, some fans, some people that's been out here always supporting you and buying your tickets and all of that instead of sending it to these well-known ass celebrities that can afford it or whatever the case is. Send it to some other folks, some people that's like us, some people that we could really, really relate to. Maybe that will put an impression upon us to want to buy some items. So whatever she does with her rebrand, I hope she does not include a ton of celebrities with millions of followers just because they got the follow when you know that's gonna be a way for for you to get more promo out of it or, or whatever the case is like I mean girl they don't have a whole lot of influence for real for real but um 
You know, those are my thoughts. Maybe some of them do, but if you are a celebrity that's not really known for your fashion, for real, for real, why are you sending stuff to them? Like, that's supposed to make an impression upon folks. Like, I don't know. Maybe that was Adidas' idea and not Beyonce, but hopefully she gets it together the next time around, okay? Either way, girl, good luck, all right? I'm glad. I feel like I want to say congratulations on ending this partnership with some damn Adidas, okay? Now, let's go ahead and move on. Let's talk about Holly Berry real quick, okay? Because I came across a post on um, another YouTuber's um, IG page because I follow her. Her name's Real Yanni, and I, I really like a lot of her content. But there was this particular post that she made, and I ain't gonna lie, I was really confused, okay? She put up a tweet that I believe TMZ ended up reposting, and I feel like they did a better job of explaining stuff to me. So um, her post, her, or at least her tweet said, okay, it said, Holly Berry is not black. Black. she's biracial facts okay she is biracial however you have by bi some biracial people that identify more as white and then you have those that identify more as black I I feel like for me I feel like Holly Berry has been one to identify more as black to me you know what I'm saying I feel like her uh, she's been more relatable to her black side than her white side but you know Girl, if she, she probably, you know, takes advantage of both, whatever. But in her post, her tweet, she says, Holly Berry is not black. She's biracial. And then she says white passing. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Biracial does not equate to white passing. It just doesn't. All right. Like um, T and Tamara, they mix with black and white. You know, I don't think that Tamara is white passing. I think that, yeah, she has a white husband, but I don't think that she's, she's white passing. Her children... I feel if they decide at a later time, could likely white pass, you know, pass for white if they wanted to based on, <clears throat> you know, how they look. You know, like looking at her children, you wouldn't know, like, I, I know for a fact her son. You may not know right out the gate that he's mixed with black. Right. That might be a question that you will have to ask. So that's what I consider to be a person that's white past and a person that looks white. And it's hard to, like, you know, tell whether or not they got any, any black in them or they could just pass for white and move on. But you could you could see the hue on Holly Berry, child, and know that she um, is a, you know, mixed with black. And that's not white passing to me. Like, girl, have y'all not seen that, that movie on Netflix? Um, I, I, I forgot what it was. I think it could have been called White Passing. I cannot remember, but, I mean, it was good. Like, those two ladies, you know, it was filmed in black and white. But, yeah, they look like they definitely could pass. But either way it go. Um, this does not fit here. She says, plus, she was uh, Holly Weird's favorite. Megan Good just talked about how hard her career has been by taking these types of roles. Chloe will learn the hard way we don't make up their rules. So they're saying... Um, so a lot of this conversation stemmed from Chloe Bailey being in the show Swarm, or yeah, the show Swarm, and they're saying her new SEX scene kicks off colorism combo about Holly Berry, and I'm kind of confused. Like, how does her story, how does her sex scene kicks off a conversation about Holly Berry? Why? Because y'all referring to Monster Ball and her hunching on that white man in Monsters Ball and showing a lot of her body and stuff like that. Like, what exactly? Matter of fact, I want to pull up that article. Just so I could read it. Let me see. Chloe Bailey, Holly Berry, TMZ, colorism. And let's see if we can pull that up and see exactly what they're saying. All right. They're saying a new show Chloe Bailey is in where she's shown having SEX with Damson Idris has sparked a debate about racism and colorism in Hollywood. And now Holly Berry's been roped in. You might have noticed the latter is trending this weekend. The reason is because of this discourse that's taken off since um, the show Swarm, OK, which starts out with the scene depicting Chloe going doing the deed in a very graphic detail. They're saying since then, there's been a lot of chatter about her decisions to do sex scenes. Some say it's a great move slash good for her career and others feel like it falls in line with other choices she made Uh as of late, as far as putting Chris Brown, like, see, here's the thing. This is where I got a problem. Because, see, now y'all reaching. Y'all be reaching the same way y'all kind of be reaching with the Lotto situation. It's because y'all don't like Lotto. Y'all be sitting up there dragging that girl about every single little thing that she does. And I have to say, girl, it's irritating. Because I know it would get irritating as hell for me. Like, girl, y'all literally nitpick, pull it apart. And But if your fave did it, it'll be a go. Like, it don't be making sense, but I'm going to let y'all do what y'all want to do. And I feel like y'all doing the same thing with Chloe. Y'all nitpicking apart. So if it's not the Chris Brown situation, y'all drug her for hanging with, for doing a song with Chris Brown, 
Y'all heard the song, actually kind of liked the song. Now y'all trying to shift gears. And then y'all over here saying, oh, it'll be a great move for her career. But then also a ton of y'all are saying, no, this is going to be super bad for her career. <sighs> she really can't win because y'all ain't going to let her, <laughs> okay? <laughs> damned if she do, damned if she don't. Might as well do what the hell you want to do. If she doesn't make it in acting, I think she'll still continue to be successful in some fashion in her music career, but let's keep going. They said, as one Twitter user posted, where is Chloe Bailey's mentor, please? She's been making terrible decisions lately. She should have never done the sex scene in Swarm, and I'm not even gonna go into her most recent collab. A lot of other folks reacted similarly. I just didn't see it as being that big of a deal for her to do a, this sex scene. Like, what, was it the position that has y'all so bothered? Or if she was under the covers and it was implied that she had a sex scene, was y'all going to complain about that too? Like, what's going on? They're saying on Saturday, on Saturday that convo shifted when someone brought up Holly in comparison. She tweeted Holly Berry, getting back shots role, getting back shot roles got her an Oscar. I don't even know if it was a back shot role that she got. I thought it was the fact that she really showed her breast and everything all up. Like, it looked like it was a full-fledged sex scene or whatever that she had going on over there at Monsters Ball. Um, the point she was making, Holly also did risky stuff in her day, Monsters Ball being the prime example for which she won an Oscar. But that in and of itself did not diminish her work and her accolades. This user was essentially saying Chloe's sex scene won't define her acting career and that it's unfair to suggest she'll be derailed because of it. Basically, stop giving her premature flack and that's where I'm at stop giving this girl premature flack stop trying to identify what's gonna happen with her career based on one particular scene all right um let's see what else they said however another twitter user uh oh another twitter user uh, responded suggesting holly enjoys the benefit of a lighter skin complexion and even went on went so far as to claim that she's white passing obviously she isn't holly looks black not white which is literally what white passing means okay um i don't i i, I don't think that she looks black not not white which is what White, literally what white passing means. No, I don't think that's what that means. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would have to look white, purely white, in order to pass, although you do have a black in you. Have y'all not seen that movie? Um, uh, I think Mahalia Jack. Ooh, or was that? I cannot think. Imitation of Life is what I think it's called with the white girl that was passing and she hated her mama because she was black. And her mama, it's like an old, 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 old film. It's like super old. But um, I think it's called Imitation of Life. Like that's white passing. Okay? Not just because she looks black, she's not white. That's white. Passing. Like I don't understand what this person was trying to put out there. I understand some of it as far as Holly Berry benefiting because she's of a certain type of of complexion you know what I'm saying like I don't think that Viola Davis could have done a scene like that and then she just would have been able to like win an Oscar or whatever yes but then at the same time I feel like um I still feel like Chloe's Chloe is in the beginning phase of her acting career right so we don't know what this young lady is going to go on and do at a later time I don't think that this is going to be something that's going to stifle her career at all um I just don't. I do feel like this is premature flat, and I feel like people just want to have these um, intelligent, uh, racial, colorist conversations or whatever, and everybody sounds so damn profound when I just feel like, do you sound profound? Do you really? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. Semantics aside, however, this woman's point, as she further explained on her page, is that Holly, fi Holly fits Holly Hollywood's traditional white European beauty standard. I do agree with her on that. And um, I did mention that on her page because I was like, now, at what point did Holly Berry ever white pass? That's what I'm trying to find. I've never seen that woman to, to pass for white. That's so wrong. However, as she goes on with the rest of her point, Holly Berry definitely benefits from the European standard, like like that type of beauty. Yes, I will give you that, right? But at the end of the day, although that's because that's what Holly Berry identifies as, does it mean that Chloe doing a similar, not a similar role, but Chloe doing a sex scene is going to affect her career? Chloe may not even be trying to get no Oscar off of this performance. And Chloe wasn't even in the show long enough for me for her to even win an Oscar off of this, okay? I feel like who should get an Oscar is Dominique Fishback, the young lady that played 
um, Dre in the in the movie because it was layers to her character and she did her fucking thing and I think that she definitely deserves you know a lot of key awards for that. But y'all taking a, such a small short moment and trying to define what's gonna happen with this lady's career as if it's going to one propel her career or if it's as one going to diminish her career in any capacity. Um, I just, I, I don't think it's going to hurt or harm her. I think she's going to get booked on the next role based on her talent and whether they see her as a fit for that role. And then she's going to go on, she's going to progress and progress and progress. I feel like a lot of y'all are having these conversations about the sex scene. It's always going to hurt her and it's going to hurt this and it's going to hurt that because y'all don't like the fact that this girl has really been showing off her sex appeal as an artist. Y'all are so used to seeing her in this duo group with her sister and then now when she decides to, you know, show a difference of her being in that group versus her being a solo artist and she's coming into her sexuality and all of that, it's bothering a lot of y'all people and y'all really can't take it. So now that y'all see her do this sex scene, y'all decided that y'all gonna use that as ammunition to come at her and try and complain about some other shit. And it's just like, let's deny and say that we did. And also, let's stop that conversation of saying that Holly Berry is white passing because she's not. Now, all of the other points that were being made as far as um, Holly Berry being successful in her space um a lot of it contributed to you know um the standard of beauty within the industry i think that i think that's definitely a point i think you definitely have a point especially during the time that um holly berry has come up during that industry i feel like not all things have changed when it comes to the industry but some things have definitely changed and i feel like more black women have won notable awards you know and they didn't even have to show off their body or do anything and still won those awards so it's kind of giving like Mm, although you have a point in some sense, let's not put so much weight on the fact that Holly Berry's career propelled and she was extremely successful off of winning that Oscar and off of winning that Oscar was because of the sex scene. When you have other women that went on, had great careers, didn't do none of that, got Oscars and all of that. I just feel like some of these conversations just be, um, I just feel like they don't be making sense all the time. They don't because I'm like, I hear what y'all saying, but what does that say about the other black women that's going on to win awards as well? And they didn't even have to do all of that. So I don't know. I just, girl, I just be confused. Y'all, you know, I'm sure y'all going to eat me in the comments and I'm going to let y'all eat me, honey. Make sure you have a, a cute fork. Don't use plastic on me when you eat, girl. Make sure you get you some, some nice little silverware, some gold or something like this, silver and gold. Get you some of that when you decide to eat me in the comments, honey, okay? But um, I'm just letting y'all know my thoughts. Like, it was giving a reach. I see what y'all saying, but the conversation definitely was giving premature flag. And y'all just want to have yet something else to complain about or something else to feel intelligent or enlightened about. Something that you feel that you could check people on when it comes to that. Like, girl, what the hell is y'all talking about? Girl, anyway, honey, y'all leave y'all thoughts on that, honey. Let me go ahead and let's move on, all right? Let's talk about Black China. It's talking about beauty standards and stuff. Girl, at one point, a beauty standard was having a big old booty that likely was not real. Okay, girl, y'all booties was out here so fake. Y'all was giving women like me with the real asses a run for our money. Because let me tell you, I hate it so much because so many people get their asses done. And I say this all the time because it truly bothers me, girl. It's the fact that they think mine is fake. And I'd be like, Bitch, no, ma'am. Oh, uh, girl, if you saw throwback pictures of my mama, you would see. I go, all of this and that from her, period. But anyway, girl, I had to bring that up. But speaking of Black China, okay, beauty standards, I'm actually happy about this for her. Um, she's getting fillers removed out of her face, okay? She's lowering her the size of her breast, okay? She's getting some of her breast implants either taken out or lowered in whatever, you know what I'm saying? Because I guess she said they were too big and it didn't fit her frame with her going to the gym. She's also getting the shots taken out. She was saying that a BBL and butt shots are two different things. Um, and so, um, I guess BBL, you use your own fat or whatever the case is. And then the shots, you have illegal substances that's been put into your ass. I don't know, but from the time frame that she was getting the shots or whatever, taken out of her butt, I was still seeing her sit on her butt. So I was a little confused. Like, girl, which one did you get? I'm so lost. Like, I think she said she was getting a butt reduction. So if you get a butt reduction, it sounds like some of that silicone or whatever you got injected in there is still back there. You just had them cut off a piece of your ass. So how did that work? Like, you were able to sit down in a car and all that. Did you have to sit on, like, did you have to sit on something? How did that work? Girl, mm-mm. 
uh-uh. That's a lot. That's a lot y'all be putting y'all selves through. But I appreciate her going through it. If she got it illegally, I appreciate her getting it removed pro- legally. You know what I'm saying? Because people have risked their lives, girl. And I hate that for them, the ones that didn't make it. But that's where she's at. And I can appreciate this new journey that, you know, um, Black China is on. I like this for her. And I want to see how it, how it goes for her. Um, I feel like everybody is entitled to get to a place where they want to rebrand themselves. I see absolutely nothing wrong with that. So if you want to get your rebrand on, girl, get your rebrand on. Okay, get your rebrand on and do your thing. Like, I'm here for it. She wants to be called Angela White. She really doesn't want to be referred to as Black China. And I feel like she's not the only person making these changes because I've also been hearing that some of the Kardashians have been making changes. Primarily, Miss Kim Kardashian has been making changes. I think she probably took some of her butt out, too. Okay, I'll never forget that episode. She went to the doctor trying to convince her sisters that her ass was real. And it's like, girl, that's y'all sister. Y'all know that shit ain't real. Like, why is y'all over here playing with us on the screen? Only for the doctor to say that it is. Girl, stop the shit. Anyway, honey, that's what's going on with Black China, And I like that for her. She wants to be called Angela White. And um, she'll get to that place. You know, ain't that wrong with doing a little rebrand? Maybe she can get some better deals on the table. Maybe people will take her a bit more seriously, okay? I don't think Black China is as dumb as she's looked in the past, you know? Listening to her on some interviews, she sounds like she's pretty intelligent. It's just that she don't, she's a woman of of not many words, okay? She don't like to say a whole lot, okay? But, um... Yeah, we'll see what's going to come of that. Y'all let me know how y'all feeling about Black China and this transformation that she's trying to bring back to the people, okay? Let's go ahead and um move on. Who else do I want to talk about? Summer Walker, girl. Y'all, Summer Walker had a party for her daughter, her cute little girl, her oldest daughter. And when she was holding on to her daughter, y'all, this video went viral of her. I'm not going to play the video because, again, YouTube sensitive. But when everybody started to sing happy birthday to her daughter, her daughter literally started to hit on her. Hit her, which is what little kids do, right? They be like when they, I don't know, they be in their little moments where, girl, you just can't really gauge how they for the act, girl. And she was just hitting on her. Then it got to a point where she started pulling her hair. And I said, oh, she fighting her mama. All her mama was doing was holding her. So she hitting on her mama, pulling on her hair and stuff like that. And I said, girl, not somebody done recorded it and uploaded it to social media, girl. Whoever did that, you need to find who that is because they was trying to embarrass you. That ain't no real friend for real, for real, girl, okay? But so a lot of people came out. They went in on uh, Summer Walker. So Summer Walker came to the front and she says that her daughter does not like loud noises. She ain't hit me till 50 people started singing happy birthday. And the last video she hit me, we were still singing loud as, fuck, as well, LOL. She says, y'all can shut the on my baby birthday all right she also goes on to say in the shade room comments baby's hit but i can't sit here and tell summer what to do with her baby or no i'm sorry that was somebody else okay um this person says um she says baby hit baby's hit but i can't sit here and tell summer what to do with her baby or anyone else for me if i had a baby doing that i will encourage her not to because it's not nice guess i just have to be a mother and in that situation summer seems like a great mother to her babies for sure though baby girl is probably just going through her phases um the mean phase now um that's very true that's how babies can be and I'm when I saw it I was thinking too like girl she's in her terrible two phase because when they in them terrible two sometimes girl they just be on some other sh- okay you have to get with them and I probably would have had to get with her in that moment now I probably would not have like whooped my child like I probably would have grabbed her hands and she would have knew like <laughs> girl you better pull my hair again, okay? Like, she she would have known, okay, by the age of two, how we get down over here. You know what I'm saying? But I think that Summer is a great mom, you know, um, for the most part, from what we do see on social media. And I think her daughter was just having one of those little moments. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if it could have been, well, girl, that wasn't giving no happy phase. And she was happy it was her birthday. It was giving, girl, put me down. I don't even know why the hell you picked me up. When you saw me over here playing and you interrupted what the hell it was I was doing so you can hold me and so y'all can sing to me, girl, put me the fuck down. Like, that's kind of what it was giving that her daughter wanted to be put down. Like, y'all could have sung to me while I sat in the chair I don't even know why the fuck you put me up okay why did you do that like that's what her daughter was giving okay but she said her daughter don't like loud noises and everybody singing to her loud definitely disrupted her peace so that's why she cut up on the people the way that she did so we just go girl okay 
I'm just telling y'all what it is that Summer had to say. All right. But that's all that I got. Y'all leave y'all thoughts and comments down below for everything that we just discussed on the quick chat. I'm Jamie. That's me. Don't forget to like, comment, uh, subscribe, share my videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Jamie. That's me. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.